Ready? Good afternoon, relatives. My name is Karina Gould. I am the tribal chair for the Confederated Villages of Lashan Nation, on whose territory you are now sitting on. We have been here since the beginning of time. This place that you now know as Oakland is the first place that our ancestors lived in this territory is called Huchun. And so if you're from Oakland, you could also say you are from Huchun. My ancestors are from Alameda, Contra Costa, San Joaquin, Solano, and Napa. And so our territories are vast, but we have never gone away. For over 20 years, we have been making it uh, known that we are still here. And so on behalf of my ancestors, I welcome you to our territories, the territories that we have always known. The language that I spoke to you, the Chochenyo language, was a language that my grandfather, my great-grandfather, Jose Guzman, was one of the last speakers of. Chochenyo is wanting to come home. And so my daughter, Deja Gould, is the language keeper. And we are reawakening that language again. These lands and these waters that we see here want to hear those languages again, want to hear those songs again by the waters. As we come together with all of you in what is now called the city of Oakland, as we celebrate this place that we all live in, this place that I grew up in and I raised my children in, this place that has become an international city, we welcome all of your ancestors that come from all four directions here as well. We all stand on the shoulders of our ancestors. Our journeys have been long to get to this place. But we remember that our ancestors, some of us, have been here forever. And so in a land acknowledgement, a land acknowledgement is about not only acknowledging the lands that you're on, but living in reciprocity with the First Nation peoples on whose land you're on. How do we work and build bridges together so that we take care of the lands and the waters that we all live near? And so that's what we are doing. The Segorite Land Trust is the first urban indigenous women-led land trust in the country. And it was started right here in the Bay Area in Oakland as a, I helped to co-found that as a result of trying to preserve and protect my sacred sites, the sacred sites called shell mounds that are all along the Bay Area, the places that my ancestors had villages and cemeteries. These places, I call on you to be with us to protect these sacred sites, to work in relationship with us as the city of Oakland has. And some of you may have heard that the city of Oakland is the first city in the nation to give back land to a non-federally recognized tribe. We look forward to building relationships with you. I have my brother Anthony here with me and he's gonna offer a song for us today as we go forward because this is not just Lashawn Ohlone territory, this has also become the homelands of many people, indigenous people that have moved here through relocation policies of the United States government. And we have many different organizations within Oakland and the Bay Area that serve those many populations. And so, Anthony, please. Good evening, all, and thank you, Karina and Anthony, for the always needed land acknowledgement. I'm Pastor Jim Hopkins, Lakeshore Avenue Baptist Church. I've been asked to bless the space this evening. 
God of all, God of many names, God of many stories, God of eternal love, source of mercy, hope of justice. We do not bid you to be present with us this evening for there is no place that you are not. You are already here. Instead, we welcome you into this place. We acknowledge your enduring presence and we commit to walking anew in the ways you have taught your people. For this gathering place, for these Casa Arabella apartments, for this current and future home to many, for Ibaldsi and the Unity Council and all who brought this splendid place into being, we are grateful. May all that Casa Arabella represents be all that Oakland comes to represent. We gather to seek the well-being of Oakland, our beloved city, a city in which pain abounds, a city in which beauty abounds, a city in which grief often holds sway, and a city in which there is ample reason for gratitude. You have blessed us with a heritage of striving for justice. You have blessed us with a diverse global heritage. You have blessed us with a heritage of music, art, dance, food, drink, and sport. You have blessed us with a history of learning, discovering, discerning, and growing. You have blessed us with a heritage of prophets and preachers and political leaders. Tonight, as we listen to our mayor share once again her understanding of the state of our city, let us stand with pride in the heritage of our city. Let us stand with humility for the ways we have failed to honor the many gifts of our ancestors. Let us stand with openness to the pain that marks the lives of many in our community. Let us stand with gratitude for the leadership that Mayor Schaff has provided. Is there any task more daunting than being a big city mayor? Let us stand in unity believing that it is hand in hand, heart with heart, that we will move toward the future you intend for the family named Oakland. Smile upon us, Holy One. Shine upon us, Eternal One. Amen. Good evening. Welcome to Fruit Bell. Bienvenidos. How y'all doing? Como están? Muy bien. My name is Kareli Ordaz, and I have the honor of being the Chief of Staff at the Unity Council. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here with us today. First, we want to thank and acknowledge the residents of Casa Arabella. Can we give them a hand, please? Thank you for allowing us to be here today, and thank you for your patience over the last few weeks as we plan for this wonderful event. Thank you so much. Thank you, Carelli. Good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Chris Iglesias. I'm the CEO of the Unity Council, and I just want to let you know what you just saw is uh, the future of the Unity Council, the future of Oakland, and Carelli just received her master's from UC Berkeley just about a couple months ago, so. That. A lot of books of bears in the house around here. But, um, first, I would like to acknowledge and recognize um, on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Unity Council, the staff of the Unity Council, the Board of Directors of Ibalsi, East Bay Asian Local Development Corporation, our partner that developed this, developed this site, and their staff. Could we just give everybody a big round of applause? Raise your hand, Sean, Lily, other team members. Oh, there they are. Other board members. Thank you. Um, so tonight, uh, it's really a true honor to, to have Mayor Schaaf here um, delivering her final state of the city address. I think just a couple of years ago, this was a BART parking lot, just like the, ne the site next to it. These were BART parking lots. This is Fruitvale land. This Fruitvale land is not meant to be 
a, a holder of cars. It is a fertile land, like we just heard from the blessing. This is a place where you plant and you get beautiful fruit. This is a place where families grow. And this is what, it was so important to turn these parking lots back into what, they, what they're what meant to do, to, to house, to be beautiful homes for, for um, families and children. And I arrived in 2013, and for the f first two years, I was just trying to get these deals going again, making a little bit of progress, a little bit of progress, a little bit of progress, very frustrating. And then the mayor gets elected. And I remember I went and I talked to her and I said, um, hey, Mrs. Mayor, we're kind of stuck on these developments. And um, there's this senior center lease. Now, nobody knows what I'm talking about, maybe at Reskin. And I said, technically, you owe me $5 million in 2000. 23. I said, but I need that money right now. I like, I need that money right now. Everybody in city hall for two years has been saying, no, nope, we can't do it. We can't do it. And I mentioned it to her and she's like, mm, you know what? I remember that. I remember that. I remember that deal. It, it was a good deal for the city, but it was, it was a bad deal for you guys. I'm like, yeah, it was. So I need it now. And she's like, let's do it. And I turned to my staff and I'm like, man, I think we got a baller here. And, and for the next eight years, she has been a baller for this neighborhood, for this community, and really kickstarted this. And at this this is not just a Unity Council success, this is a Oakland success story with Ibalsi coming together, an Oakland architect, Oakland builder, Oakland workers. So this is a big shout out to Oakland and what could be done. And that we had to kickstart it and, and, the, and the mayor was able to kickstart it back in, just a couple years ago. With that, I'll turn back over to cut out. Thanks. Now, you just heard about the baller mayor. Let me tell you about the badass mayor. So I had the privilege of working in the mayor's administration during her first term as mayor from 2015 to 2018. That was, yes, thank you, David. <laughs> Turn up. Um, that was an exciting time uh, for Oakland. Um, and it was also a time that Oakland redefined its position in the world. And that was thanks to Mayor Schaaf. If you remember, in 2016, uh, Donald Trump was elected as the president of the United States. I know we don't want to remember, but that did happen. And, um, you know, within a matter of days, he began attacking our communities. He began coming for Oakland and really uh, challenging the very essence of what really makes America great, which is its diverse people. And when Mayor Schaaf learned that there were going to be potential raids coming to Oakland, she didn't back down, but she went into action. I saw her convene experts and leaders in the space to give her the information that she needed to make the right decision, the right decision for Oakland. And after hearing from leaders, from experts, after hearing from me and my story and the impact that this has had on my family, she made the brave decision to alert our community and fight Donald Trump directly head on, fighting against his racist agenda. She never backed down and she always led with courage. That's a badass if you ask me. As an East Oaklander and an immigrant myself, I always saw her lead with our communities in mind, and I was so lucky to be part of that. Thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity, and we're so happy to have her here today to hear her very last State of the City. So please join us in welcoming Mayor Libby Schaff. city address. What an honor it's been to be your mayor for eight, and I'll be honest, long years. <laughs> now tonight, I'm going to do more than just talk about the state of the city in this moment. I'm going to look back 
to all eight years that we have been in office. And when I say we, I want you to remember that a mayor is not a singular person. A mayor is an amazing team. It's almost an organic uh, entity that is connected to the community. But I want to look back in a way that makes us look forward to the future. I want us to envision Oakland's best future. And I want us to think about where we've been so that we see this path to this incredible future of an equitable, vibrant Oakland where everyone thrives. And let us start by acknowledging this place, Casa Arabella. This place is personally incredibly significant to me because it's really where I began my personal path of public service to the city of Oakland. When in 1999, then council member for this district, Ignacio de la Fuente, hired me to be a legislative aide, and that 24 years ago, I got to meet the namesake of this beautiful community, Casa Arabella, named for Arabella Martinez. Talk about badass. Like every good Oakland girl, when I met her, she had just been in a fight with the power. And I'm like, a baller, badass Oakland girl. She had just won that fight, and it was with Bart. Bart had tried to build a parking garage in the Fruitvale that would literally turn its back on the community, that would wall off or protect its patrons from this beautiful, vibrant community. Well, Arabella would have none of that. She was the founder of the Unity Council, but she had gone off to become the first Latina in history to be appointed to a cabinet position by a president. But she came back to Oakland to give even more. And it was her vision of the Fruitvale Transit Village which is now nationally recognized as the most successful, not only transit village, but also redevelopment that actually improved the community without displacement. Now, over the next few years, <laughs> over the next few weeks, I will be presenting keys to the city to a select number of distinguished citizens that have achieved national recognition. They've put Oakland on the map in a positive way, but they've never let that national fame stop them from giving back to their community. They've continued to lift up Oakland values and create a sense of belonging. And it is with great pleasure that tonight I present that first key to the city to Arabella Martinez. Please join me on stage. Come on, come up, come up. Please share with us a few words, Arabella. <laughs> I'm sort of stunned. Um, but this is the second time uh, that Libby has surprised me. <laughs> um, the first time was um, about a month after my husband died. And she called me up and she said, I know this is a, a bad time for you, uh, but I want you to consider being on a commissioner for the Port of Oakland. And I, 
I was amazed then and surprised. And I said, you know, I'm really honored, Libby. Uh, but could you give me a few months? Uh, I, I need a little bit of time. But, she, you know, she was right. I did join the port of Oakland. And it has been one of the best things I have ever done. The commission is phenomenal. The staff is even better. <laughs> Daria? The second one was, you know, we sort of have a little discussion each year, maybe more than that. And it's usually about what's happening at the port, uh, you know, what's going on there and how do you feel about it and things like that. And uh, uh, this time it was a little different. And um, so she said, well, you know, um, there's going to be a state of the union. I imagine you've heard about the state of the city. A speech that I'm going to be giving is going to be my last one, and um, uh, it's going to be on uh, October 19th. Um, are you going to be there? Well, you know, I'm not a really good politician, <laughs> but I understood what that meant. That was called the, called the command performance. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure I, what I was supposed to be there for, but I knew I had to be there. And so um, then she told me about this incredible um, award. But she has been with us since 1999. And when Ignacio de la Fuente was our city councilman and also our, our council president, he basically assigned her to us. I mean, she didn't know that, but that's really what happened. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> 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 and she was absolutely wonderful. We got more things done when, once she came aboard. And, you know, between she, um, Councilman Ignacio de la Fuente, uh, Robert Bob, um, and Ella Hugh Harris from the, the city, we worked miracles. And, you know, we had a saying in, at, 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 at the Unity Council, which was that, if you can see the invisible, you can do the impossible. And this was impossible. Everybody told us it was impossible. And when we said, we're the developers, a nonprofit being the developers, they said it's not possible. But we were the developers. And so, you know, now it's been 20 years since we opened the Transit Village when the first phase was completed. And in that time, I retired, others came in to lead, and they led with great passion. And, and I have to tell you that Chris uh, Iglesias, who's now the CEO, has led this organization in such a way that uh, he's, he's fulfilled my dream, and I think the dream of all of us. And the Unity Council Board continues to be there and the community continues to support us. So, you know, it's, I get the awards, but it's really everybody who's been involved in this process for all of these years. It's been a, almost a 30 year, um, or more than Journey. A, a, just about 30 <laughs> years now. But thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Arabella. I'll trade you. And you get this too. Wow. <laughs> All right, now you have to go back to your seat. I have a speech to give. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and before I continue, I do want to, yes, thank you. I want to thank the residents of Casa Arabella. I'm glad you got to see your namesake recognized tonight. Y si alguien habla español, uh, yo tengo un poco historia solamente para ti. Uh, quería presentar este año dos estados de la ciudad, uno en inglés y uno en español. 
porque esto es mi última presentación. Pero mi equipo de oficina, dígame que, alcaldesa, eres loca. <risa> es tan trabajo para hacer un estado de la ciudad. No podemos hacer dos. Entonces, esta noche es una compromesa. Uno, estado de la ciudad, pero aquí en el centro de la comunidad latino, The Fruit Bale. Gracias. All right, so the biggest lesson that Arabella taught me was the power of partnerships, because that is how this incredible transit village got built. And that lesson is one of the three lessons I'm going to talk to you about tonight. Partnerships, potholes, and promises. Now, we all know that the greatest challenges in this year, 2022, in Oakland, and indeed in the entire country, are crime, homelessness, and the rising cost of living. And I have found that the only way to make progress in any complex challenge is to form big, deep partnerships. Because in Oakland, we will always want to go far, so we must go together. Now, when we talk about public safety, the news this year is tragic. It is disturbing. And it offers us no comfort to know that the post-pandemic spike in violence in Oakland is on par with the national average. We have seen the toll of the pandemic on mental health, an increased sense of lawlessness, and a proliferation of guns on our streets. But Oakland has something that no other city has, and that is our ceasefire partnership. Now together, we can mourn those who have lost their lives, who have lost their sense of security because of the harm of crime. And we can mourn those who have lost their humanity by doing harm. And I have confidence that this partnership will adjust to these new post-pandemic conditions and return our city to a state of peace. I want to recognize that these are the peacemakers and the pastors, the healers and the social workers, the law enforcers, the prosecutors and the investigators, and the life coaches and violence interrupters that have made a profound difference in Oakland. And it has been heartbreaking for all of us because just before the pandemic, it felt like Oakland had turned the corner we had, during our first five years in office, seen the most sustained period of the fewest murders in Oakland's history. What a tragedy to lose that incredible progress. But as I said before, I believe that Ceasefire Partnership can do that again and it will take our collective energy, belief, and commitment to heal the harm that has been done and to emerge from this pandemic with an absolute commitment to a comprehensive approach to public safety to prevent, to intervene, and to enforce. Now, as mayor, I was blessed to inherit the ceasefire partnership, and I worked hard to move it to a well-established Oakland strategy. And I have confidence the next leadership team will continue that. Now that was in sharp contrast to homelessness. When I became mayor, there were no clear strategies, there were no partnerships in place. When homelessness 
exploded in this city several years ago. And our dedicated homeless staff had to essentially build the crisis response ship while they were sailing it at the same time. But build we did. And in the last five years, we have quadrupled Oakland's shelter capacity. And we've added more dignified options. The cabin community model, and I see Jim. The safe RV parks. These are bringing dignity, shelter, and services to our most vulnerable Oaklanders. And while when we look at the streets, we see and feel just such unacceptable shame in this moral crisis, these conditions. And yet data suggests that many of our efforts are making progress. Compared with three years ago, pre-pandemic, unsheltered homelessness stayed relatively stable in Oakland. Despite the pandemic, it did not go up as we had expected. And encampments or outdoor street homelessness actually decreased by 16%. I know it doesn't feel that way, but that is what the numbers show. Part of that is because we've seen a tremendous increase in vehicular homelessness. People who have to live in their cars or have lived in RVs. And then of course, all that building that we did has doubled the number of people that we've been able to bring indoors into shelter and services than we were able to do just three years ago. Now, while we continue to respond to the immediate crisis on our streets, there is one thing that we are clear about. The only real solution to homelessness is housing. Now, as soon as I became mayor, <laughs> as soon as I became mayor, we convened the Mayor's Housing Cabinet, a very powerful partnership of experts and advocates, people that didn't always sit at the same table together, market rate developers with tenant rights activists, literally at the same table. And together, they crafted a plan to protect at least 17,000 low-income Oakland households from displacement and produce 17,000 new units of housing, including 4,700 affordable homes by the year 2024. We called it the 17K, 17K plan. Now that plan became the foundation for the regional housing strategies, what's now called the three Ps, protect, preserve, and produce. And thanks to Oakland's 17K, 17K plan and the great work of that housing cabinet, we are on track to meet or have already exceeded all the goals that that plan set. We implemented the plan to pass new policies to strengthen just cause eviction laws and rent stabilization laws. We created new programs to convert existing unregulated housing to protected affordable housing. Because of these new programs, more than 36,000 Oakland families sleep better at night knowing that they have stronger protections than they had just eight years ago. And I could not be more proud of the new program, which is truly a partnership called Keep Oakland Housed. Keep Oakland Housed has directly helped formerly homeless people, our most vulnerable, stay in the housing they have. Incredible, beautiful Oaklanders like Deborah Ross. Now, you might remember Deborah from a couple State of the Cities ago. She was selling her hats out front. Well, her Keep Oakland House story has actually gotten better. She was one of the first people to actually call the program. 
She immediately got legal help to fight an eviction that would have returned her and her grandson to homelessness. She got cash assistance to pay back the rent that she had due and the bills that she hadn't paid. But she kept in touch with the case managers at Keep Oakland House, and she just moved into a new, beautiful, safer home with the security of a housing choice voucher. Now, that's what I call joy. <laughs> Keep Oakland House, which is run by the San Francisco Foundation with tons of nonprofit partners, is a true testament to the power of partnership. So much so that this year, it received an incredibly prestigious national award from the HUD secretary, Marsha Fudge, the Partnership Award of 2022. Keep Oakland House. And boy, did we blow away our goal about producing 17,000 new homes. In the last eight years, we have created almost 20,000 new homes in Oakland. Now look at what that compares to in the previous eight years. This is almost five times the amount of housing that was produced in this, the previous period. And city staff tells me that this is the biggest housing building boom that Oakland has ever had since the 1906 earthquake. That is impressive. And then when I look at Oakland's new skyline, I feel proud to think of all the homes and new jobs that have allowed us to grow Oakland, but also protect those who have made Oakland, Oakland. And we have to build more affordable housing. Now, over these last eight years, despite the end of redevelopment, we were able to nearly double affordable housing production. And that is thanks to the plan that 17K, 17K put in place to actually start issuing local affordable housing bonds. And as we leave office, we are leaving this incredible pipeline of 2,200 homes that are ready to be built. They're entitled. And the only way they all will get built is if we pass Measure U. Now, Measure U is on your ballot right now. The most important thing you need to know about it is it won't raise your taxes. So please channel your spirit of partnership when you go to vote this year. Now, I want to apologize for all these graphs. Those of you who know me know that I'm a data nerd. But I want to just remember that behind every one of these numbers is a beautiful Oakland family, like the family of Tiffany Lascado. Tiffany's here tonight. Do you want to stand up? Tiffany is an inspiration to me. Tiffany was born in Guam, but she grew up in Oakland. She graduated from Castlemont, go Knights, where she got a taste for entrepreneurship by working in the student-run Knights Cafe in the Oakland airport. Anybody remember that? But as she became an adult in Oakland and started her own family, things were tough. It was a struggle. And in 2018, she lost her $800 a month apartment to an owner move-in. And she had some credit score issues and ended up having to take a two-bedroom apartment on a busy stretch of MacArthur Boulevard that cost $2,200 a month, almost double what she had just been paying. Now, she had a newborn and two toddlers but she had to start driving Lyft on the side. And she even thought about moving to, God forbid, Las Vegas. <laughs> well, thank goodness, 
that the very next year, Tiffany won the lottery. Now, I'm not talking about the California lottery. She's not a millionaire. <laughs> she won this lottery. She got an apartment at Casa Arabella. Now, the residents here, like the residents in the nearly 3,100 new affordable homes that we've created over these last eight years, they get to live with the dignity and security of knowing that no matter what happens to their incomes, their rent will stay affordable. And there is no relief more profound than a mother's who knows she can keep a safe, stable roof over the heads of her beloved children. Now in Oakland, public-private partnerships have also allowed us to drive innovation. Now our time in office has truly been blessed by some incredible public-private partnerships and very generous donors that have allowed us to experiment at the edges of government, to try new things using private money, not your tax dollars. Now, get ready, I'm gonna go through a bunch of them rather quickly. All right, the Oakland Fund for Public Innovation. We started this nonprofit right when we came into office. It listens to our entrepreneurial public servants and conceives of bold pilots and then goes out and raises the money to implement them and evaluate them. The very first pilot they did was paint the town, allowing communities to paint place-making murals right on their streets. They also, when COVID hit, stood up Oakland's COVID relief fund just four days after lockdown. They're currently running a shallow subsidy pilot that is helping formerly homeless Oaklanders pay their rent. And early evaluation results from UCSF suggest that this may be one of the most effective ways to prevent and resolve homelessness. And then just last month, the Oakland Fund for Public Innovation won a $3 million grant for our Department of Violence Prevention to expand their school-based programs. Our cabin community model, it started as a pilot. At the time, we were the very first city in California to even try this model. Now, every major city does some version of this. And this would not have been possible without the Metropolitan Chamber of Commerce, Kaiser Permanente, that has been so amazing as a partner, and so many other donors I don't have time to name, except I do have to mention the students at Redwood Heights Elementary School that held bake sales until they raised enough money to buy one cabin. Oakland Undivided. I know you're in the house. Oakland Undivided was this incredible pandemic response. We rapidly raised $13 million so that at the beginning of the pandemic, we were able to get a laptop, a hotspot, and culturally competent tech support into the homes of every OUSD student. And two and a half years later today, Oakland Undivided has put the systems in place to make sure that we never let that digital divide exist in Oakland again. Oakland Undivided. <laughs> Oakland Resilient Families is one of the nation's largest demonstrations of guaranteed income run by Blue Meridian, the Oakland Thrives Leadership Council and Up Together, it is giving 600 Oakland families $500 a month, no strings attached. And it's part of a national movement to build more dignified paths out of poverty. <clears throat> 
teachers rooted in Oakland. <laughs> is providing affordable housing to our new teachers of color. And we call it TRIO for short, just launched TRIO Plus, which is an affordable housing marketplace that actually matches all OUSD teachers with discounted rents, teachers rooted in Oakland. And I think you heard earlier about our beautiful, deep partnership with Karina Gould and the Segorate Land Trust that made Oakland the first city in the nation to give back municipal land to our first indigenous people. Thank you. <laughs> These public-private partnerships show us what is possible. They let us take what works and scale it and institutionalize it in government. That is systems change. And it also allows us to share our best practices beyond government. I read an op-ed recently that said, perhaps Oakland Promise will be Oakland's best export. Now today, nearly all of those partnerships have moved from pilot to permanent policy. <laughs> And we leave Oakland with the Oakland Fund for Public Innovation, now an independent, strong, nonprofit organization that is going to keep driving innovation in Oakland for generations to come. Thank you, Juma. All right, now innovation is exciting. Some people might even say it's sexy. So let's talk about something that I think is the most unsexy part of government, and that is potholes. Now to me, potholes symbolize the lesson that government has got to attend to the basics, the everyday needs that people expect their government to keep going, like streets and sidewalks, storm drains, and yes, sewers. But we cannot build a path to Oakland's best future if it is full of potholes. And Oakland's got some doozies. Now this pothole, I want you all to know, got filled just two days later, okay? Let's just be clear about that. <laughs> now when we started eight years ago in office, the city's roads were literally crumbling. Oakland actually was ranked as the second worst roads in the country and there was no plan to fix it. So we did three big things. First, we created Oakland's first Department of Transportation. Second, we can, we can, let's do a little oak dot in the room. Second, we stood up a 311 system, a single easy to remember phone number with a very cool app that made it easier for you to tell the city where the potholes are, where the dumping is, what to come and fix, and let us respond rapidly. And then finally, we created an infrastructure bond program. The idea of creating a renewable resource at scale so that we could start to reverse the decay that we were seeing in Oakland's infrastructure. And the first attempt to start that renewable bond was on your 2020, I'm sorry, 2016 ballot, and it was Measure KK, and thank you, you passed it by 83% of the vote. <laughs> and look what those three things helped us do. In eight years, we have paved 161 miles of roads in Oakland. One hundred miles just in the last three years. In fact, we broke Oakland's all-time record two years in a row. We call it the Great Oakland Pave. Now, compare what we did. This is the paving two years. I'm sorry, the same period of time eight years earlier. Actually, that has the wrong label on it. We should fix that. <laughs> and that is what we got done during our eight years in office. Now we know there is a lot more paving to do and it can get done. We can keep this going. 
once again, if Measure U passes at this November 8th election. Did I mention it will not raise your taxes? But what it will do is it will rid Oakland of the damn potholes and it will help us build the desperately needed affordable housing. Please channel partnership when you vote this year. Now, Oakland centers racial equity in everything we do. Potholes are no exception. So that when we started the Great Oakland Pave, we actually prioritized neighborhoods and streets that had not yet gotten any city resources for a very long time. Low-income communities where a flat tire or a broken axle could mean lost wages, falling behind in rent. I'm talking about streets in this neighborhood like Fruitvale and Foothill, 36th and 37th, or in Deep East, Birch, Olive, Sunnyside, or some of the first streets that we actually paved were A and D streets right around Allen Temple Baptist Church. And I heard a story that when our city crews arrived, an elderly man came out onto his front porch and he said, I have lived in this house my entire life and I have never seen the city do anything on my street. And then with a little tear in his eye, he said, I thought the city had forgotten about us, but I'm glad that at least you're remembering us now. Now I'll end this final address with our last lesson, and that is on promises. Our Lishan Ohlone tribal leader, Karina Gould, reminds us that the actions we take today must be for the benefit of the next seven generations. And it's in this spirit that our office has always had a guiding question. What is in the best long-term interest of Oakland? Now, sometimes that means we've done things that are unpopular and hard, like killing the coal terminal, or investing in climate change, or fighting to give Oakland's waterfront back to the people by transforming the obsolete Howard Terminal into a vibrant waterfront neighborhood with public parks, affordable housing, good jobs, and yes, a new spectacular home for our Oakland A's. And as we look back at the partnerships that we have helped build that gave Oakland its most extended period of peace to date, its greatest building boom this century, its record-breaking street repaving, and its nationally recognized innovations. We have to say that there is nothing we are more proud of than the Oakland promise. <laughs> Now, the Oakland Promise is more than a nonprofit organization that we started in our office, but now is huge, nationally recognized model, cradle to career continuum of supports that are getting more Oakland public school graduates to and through college. The Oakland Promise is a belief that we hold collectively in our Oakland consciousness that every baby is brilliant, that opportunity changes everything, and that every parent deserves to know and feel that their precious child will get all the education they need and deserve. That is Oakland's promise. <laughs> and so we leave the children of Oakland two things that we believe will transform the next generations. The first is the hard-fought Measure AA that for the next 30 years will provide OUSD students with college access supports and 
most importantly, it will provide universal preschool access, quality preschool, to all of Oakland's three and four-year-olds. And second, we leave the city of Oakland with the Generation Fund. Now the Generation Fund is a $50 million fund that I personally spent the last eight years raising. It will allow through the year 2035 for every baby born to low-income parents in Oakland to have a $500 college savings account, everyone. And to allow, <laughs> and to allow every low-income OUSD graduate to have a $1,000 a year scholarship. That's everyone for the next generation. And we make this promise to Oakland because our children are Oakland's promise. Hicimos esta promesa a Oakland porque nuestros niños son la promesa de Oakland. So let me end tonight's address, it's almost over, by finishing Tiffany Luxato's story. Believe it or not, it gets better. Now Tiffany has three brilliant babies, Buhai, Shola, and Maddie, and she took them to the Unity Council's Head Start program at Foothill Square, the type of quality preschool that now every family in Oakland will enjoy thanks to Measure AA. But it was there that she got connected to the Oakland Promise and its Brilliant Baby program. And not only did her kindergartner get a K to C early scholarship and her two preschoolers got those $500 college savings accounts, but she got a financial coach. Now I heard that that financial coach gave a little bit of tough love, but she supported Tiffany in realizing that high school dream that she had to own her own business. Tiffany opened the Lay Company Cooperative the very first Pacific Islander lay making cooperative in the country. And then Tiffany was hired by the Unity Council to become their director of economic development, where she empowers others to find purposeful work family sustaining wages, entrepreneurial opportunities, and she coaches other small businesses. And Tiffany stayed in touch with her financial coach from Brilliant Baby, who actually connected her to something called AC Boost and helped her with that tough love, improve that credit score. And just last week, Tiffany realized another big dream. She just moved into her own home. Congratulations on being an Oakland homeowner. And she assures me that Buhai, Shola, and Maddie all know they are going to college, no question. In fact, Buhai will tell you he's going to Harvard. Now, Tiffany joined us last month on stage when we announced the Generation Fund. She stood up so beautifully and proudly right after Vice President Kamala Harris had spoken. And she held her two brilliant babies' hands and she said something that really moved me. She said, the greatest gift of programs like the Unity Council and the Oakland Promise is that they instilled in us 
that we deserved to live a life of dignity. Bravo. Tiffany, your story gives me joy. It gives me hope. It makes me certain that we are on the path to Oakland's best future. <laughs> Oakland, we love you. It has been the honor of a lifetime to serve as your mayor, and thank you. Thank you.